Hello, AP Calculus students. Mr. Record here, still talking about the chain rule. And if you've had a chance to take a look at some of the other uh, videos in the series, you'd found that we've gradually been maneuvering through the uh, chain rule and, and, and tackling more and more difficult problems uh, with each ensuing example. And we are now in the middle of the grouping of problems where you're, you're nesting the chain rule with a product or a quotient rule. And I think this example five illustrates that very, very plainly in that we have a function uh, on top x divided by a cube root function in the denominator, which clearly indicates that the quotient rule is very apparent in this problem. So we're going to tackle this problem as if it were a quotient rule problem. Now, before I start dealing with the derivative here per se, it might be worth mentioning that anytime you've got a radical expression, it's worth your while to rewrite it so that the function would be, uh, or the piece of the function would be raised to a fractional exponent. So I'm going to suggest that we call this x squared plus 4 to the 1 third. Now, for some of you who might be looking at this and thinking about other ways that you could write this x squared plus 4 to the 1 third, it is, it is possible that you could pop that up to the numerator and give it a negative exponent in which case you could perform the product rule with this. You're still not going to avoid the chain rule, and some students would prefer the product rule over the quotient rule uh, due to the fact that it doesn't contain a fraction. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, since it's written in a quotient rule format, I'm going to stick with that particular uh, setup. So we are going to go ahead and take our derivative via the quotient rule. So we will take the derivative of the top, which is 1. I'm going to write that just for emphasis multiplied by the denominator, nothing changing. And then I will subtract the top. And now we will multiply by the derivative of the denominator, which would produce a 1 third out in front, right? Remember, we're taking the derivative of this x squared plus 4 to the 1 third. The x squared plus 4 remains intact. We will lessen that exponent by 1, which would make it a negative 2 thirds power and then finish up our chain rule by multiplying it all by 2x. And of course, this is all going to be over the denominator squared. So that would be x squared plus 4 raised to the 1 third quantity squared. And we can simplify that next. OK, calculus is over. Algebra begins. And as I've said with uh, many of my other videos, it, you really are going to find out that you're going to be investing more algebra time into these problems than calculus. And that's going to be important for a variety of reasons. It's going to help you, first of all, check your answers with the back of the book uh, or perhaps on a CAS calculator, which I will do uh, for you uh, later at the end of this uh, solution. Uh, but it'll also allow you to do some other things uh, where you might apply the derivative to do some things like finding a maximum or a minimum and things of that nature. So we do need to simplify this. And I'll just start by cleaning up some things. Uh, uh, we're not writing the extraneous one there in front of the first binomial. Uh, looking over here at this mess here, we see that, well, there is a minus, but there is no other negative. So we'll keep that minus intact. And we notice that, ah, oh, well, we have a two here and a one third that yeah, not the best number we can use, but 2 thirds is going to be that coefficient. We can deal with that later. x times x would be x squared. Now, notice I'll take care of any constants, any monomial terms, and then I'll get to the binomial term, x squared plus 4, which is still raised to the negative 2 thirds. And then we can go ahead and take care of our denominator using the power to a power rule whenever you multiply two exponents. I'm sorry, whenever you, I gave it away, whenever you have a <coughs> base to a pe an exponent raised to another exponent, you will multiply. Okay, still a couple of things wrong with this solution. It is looking better, but we have uh, really two issues going on. First of all, we have a fraction located within a fraction, right, which makes, makes this whole thing called a complex fraction, which
this negative exponent here uh, tied up within our problem that we want to fix as well. And one of those issues we take care of first. Um, have to take care of the negative exponent issue. This negative exponent issue is very similar to the way that I did a previous example in that we look to see what is is that we can factor out of the numerator. What is our greatest common factor? And since there is no uh, term of, of any sort in front of this x squared plus 4 binomial here, we know that he's kind of standing alone in that he's got his partner over here in x squared plus 4 binomial that is the same. So we should be able to factor out some power of x squared plus 4. We just have to decide what that power is. And as I've said before, you just take a look at the exponents and you find out whichever is the smaller. If you had by some chance three of those binomials, then you would look at the exponents and say which one is the smallest. So in this case, the negative two-thirds is going to come out in front. And then I'm going to put some larger parentheses to denote what I've got left inside. And of course, x squared plus 4 to some power is going to be left inside, right? When we factor out a negative two-thirds exponent here, we are going to be left with a 1. Now I'm going to talk through that because this is one of the things that bothers more students than anything else. How do I know that there's going to be a 1 here? Well, just kind of backtrack. If you were to multiply this term back through, right, you know that you have to get this result. So if we do multiply, since we have like bases, we are supposed to add the exponents. Well, let's see. What is negative 2 thirds plus positive 1? It is positive 1 third. So that's the exponent that we need. We'll subtract 2 thirds for this term. Our x squared, of course, will come straight down. And then since this entire piece, x squared plus 4 to the negative 2 thirds, was factored out, we're done. And then the denominator still is x squared plus 4 to the 2 thirds. Okay, extend the page here a little bit <coughs> and then do some more simplifying. Well, a couple of things that we can do here that's going to be very important. First of all, hey, remember that negative exponent, that guy that we really, really wanted to get rid of? Well, now we can do that. We can see that this term, now that it's completely factored out, can drop to the denominator. So by doing that, it's going to sort of join up with this guy. So let's draw our fraction line here and move this to the denominator. Pretend that he's down here right now. He has now a positive 2 thirds power. When you multiply two like bases, what do you do to the exponents? You would add them together, and that would be make a positive 4 thirds exponent. Now you've got this numerator here that we're still uh, looking to simplify a bit. And we find that, well, an x squared and a minus 2 thirds x squared would make for a 1 third x squared. And then our plus 4 just drops on in. But again, we're still sort of violating that whole, hey, we have a complex fraction rule here. We'd like to fix that. So best way to do that, we can illustrate that with some different color is to multiply the top and the bottom of this fraction by some value that will clear away any other fraction. And since 3 is the only denominator we see, that would be a great choice. Multiply the top and the bottom by 3. That's essentially multiplying by 1. And what do we get? Well, the 3 distributes through, and we would have an x squared plus 12. Right? 3 times 4 would be 12. And then the denominator would be 3 times the quantity x squared plus 4 to the 4 thirds. And you'll notice that this doesn't violate any negative exponent rules. It has <coughs> all the complex fractions pretty much cleaned up. And uh, it's pretty much in a nice form. Um, I mentioned before that we were going to take a look at this with a CAS calculator. And sometimes you know, a CAS calculator can be a little bit uh, unpredictable as to what final form it's going to produce. But let's take a look here. I'm using uh, the TI Inspire CX here. 
And I'm going to go ahead and in my scratch pad do the shortcut for a derivative, which is shift minus the derivative with respect to x. So I would have that taken care of. And then it looks like we're going to put a fraction in. That's control divide. And the original problem was an x, if you recall, on top. And a cube root, cube root of the quantity x squared plus 4. All right, let's take a look. Let's see what we get here. Well, if you compare this, x squared plus 12 on top over 3 quantity x squared plus 4 to the 4 thirds on bottom, looks like the CAS calculator did a pretty good job of giving us exactly what we simplified. So once again, using a CAS is very, very uh, effective in being able to check answers, especially if you're working on an assignment that you don't necessarily have the answers. Uh, and, and it's a great way to find out if you're doing things correctly. Anyhow, I hope this helped a little bit. Um, I've got another video, I think, coming up that's going to tackle one more nested product quotient and chain. And I keep saying this over and over again, and I, and I can't say it enough. The more of these that you practice, the better you get.